right, what's up, everybody? We're live, and be sure to drop your questions. We're going to answer them in a time-sensitive fashion. Hope hopefully, you answer as many questions as possible, and I'll get timestamps for you at the end. Meanwhile, while everyone's jumping on, I'm going to go answer some questions from the comment section. Guys, if you ever can't get a hold of me, whether it's uh, Patreon or Instagram, just be sure to drop a question on YouTube because your question is most likely going to be able to serve the others. Uh, somebody asks, with Alpha GPC, it works really well, but I noticed it being a company with low moods and depression. Do you have any advice on this or is there an effective alter alternative? The effective alternatives with Alpha GPC are going to be CDP choline or acetylcholine. You can consider taking both of those, but really... Alpha GPC is going to be the most effective one. I think people go wrong with the dosage of it. Of it. So 150 milligrams uh, once a day is good to start with. I prefer taking it three times a day. I'm just a believer that with Alpha GPC, um, consider it like fuel. So the more fuel you exhaust, the more fuel you exhaust, the more Alpha GPC you would have to consume. I'm I'm typically taking three um about 450 milligrams of Alpha GPC these days. So I'm taking it three times a day. Where I think it's really appropriate to use alpha gpc is when you're experiencing a caffeine crash and i was talking to somebody today and they 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 were taking about 800 milligrams of caffeine and then obviously they were experiencing a caffeine crash somewhere between three to four hours following ingestion that's a good time to consume alpha gpc along with some l tyrosine maybe some rhodiola rosea just depending on how you react to it um what's up guys as you hop in here be sure to drop a comment and let me know where you're from feel free to ask your question all right, what else? Um, what what are my thoughts on now Tribulus Extreme? I don't like that product. You see, so that particular uh, version of Tribulus has green tea extract with it. There are, now, there's very few nootropics that you wouldn't take in a fasted state, but some of them would include green tea extract and fish oil. Um, what else? Um, alpha lipoic acid. Pretty much anything which is going to do something as far as as far as increasing your insulin sensitivity and stabilizing your blood sugar, uh, yeah, often shouldn't be taken in a fasted state. Um, yeah. Okay. Cool. 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 Lithium warranty. Yeah, a lot of people are requesting that. Um, I've tried. Tribulus Terrestris for about a month, and I've seen no increase in testosterone and no effect in training. The supplement is basically a placebo. The first thing I noticed with Tribulus Terrestris was a better mood and then better sleep. As far as it boosting testosterone, boosting strength, helping with um, bone strength, thing, things like that, maybe like 30% of people of users would see it working, but the, but the majority of people, yeah, it's, I mean, it's so hard to tell. Uh, which nootropics are most effective for nervous system and overall mental health? The nervous system, um, fish oil is going to be great. Um, um, I mean, just in general, I think most people are making the mistake of not getting like a good comprehensive multivitamin, which has all your vitamins, minerals at proper dosages, has, has things out there like, um, uh, such as choline bitartrate even. So I would make sure that you're getting like an action. The, the majority of good multivitamins are going to cost over $50 a month. So that's the first thing. And then as far as your nervous system, be very mindful of your caffeine intake. I don't ever recommend people taking like over 400 milligrams a day. So 300 milligrams or something less is good. And be sure to check in with your thyroid health. Other than that, freezing cold showers have been proven to work, uh, re your re recovery. So if you're exercising very intensely, People overdo it. You don't, in most cases, you don't even have to exercise more than an hour. Even 45 minutes is going to be sufficient. I think, um, and understanding kind of what, what exercises are going to fatigue you the most as far as your recovery is concerned, like high intensity interval training, don't do it every single day. I made that mistake actually, just trying to lose weight and, um, doing interval training very often. And then something funny happens and like your physique just looks horrible. You feel tired all the time. So be careful with that. Great question. And overall mental health. So with respect to mental health, what's going to replace sleep? Hardly anything. But the good thing with sleep is, let's say if you are sleep deprived, you can always catch up with sleep. Uh, there, there have been times when, I mean, I went like uh, five to six hours of sleep for a long for a long stretch, maybe even two months. But then afterwards, you can catch up on that sleep. Sleep nine, 10 hours if you have to, and then you're and then you're all good. Um, ashwagandha is pretty safe. Rhodia rose has some really solid research um, around it. The racetam is more so good when it comes to boosting drive becoming more ambitious, 
helping you focus, but are they good for your mental health? Probably not. They kind of make you a little bit imbalanced. I've made a lot of money and uh, done really well for my business thanks to taking the, some of the rest times, but they've definitely made me like, um, you know, kind of that tunnel, that uh, tunnel vision kind of focus, which doesn't allow you to be a good, well-rounded person. Hope that's helpful. Can Lion's Mane, Prastam, Alpha GPC, Alcar, and Lithium Orotate be taken together? Yeah, I don't see. I don't see why not. Now, when it comes to interactions, they're very rare. And so, when people ask questions like these, can they be taken together? Most likely, they're actually going to feel you're you're going to feel better using them along with each other, along with uh, especially like stuff like Prastam and Alpha GPC. These are really good foundations to take when you should be concerned about interactions. Are uh, when you're using things like SSRIs or when you're using stimulants. For example, if you're going to use something like theocrine, like dynamine and caffeine together, be mindful of the fact that, I mean, that's very, the, these are stimulants. They're going to be, they're going to be strong on your heart. I don't want you experiencing heart palpitations and such, but these, yeah, I, I would say they're fine. You know, taking 20 to 30 nootropics at the same time. And, and um, I'm not the only one who does that. If you look at some of the nootropic blends out there, you look at quality mind, for example, they've mixed a number of things. Um, it looks like a pretty credible product. Or looks like a Google product. Do you have an experience with Mind Lab Pro for vision? No, I don't really see why you would take it for vision, but there are some nootropics out there that are designed to help you with eye health. So you can look into some of the ingredients. I think uh, Neurohacker Collective has a good product on that too. Uh, what's your review on Hunter Focus? Is it better than Mind Lab Pro? What the heck is Hunter Focus? Let me look it up for you. For you. Hunter Focus Premium Nootropic. Cool. 100%. 100 man, there's so many nootropic blends out there. How can you keep up these days? But it's got uh, vitamin B, D, acetyl L carnitine, L tyrosine, lion's mane. And that's a very solid product. I can look at it right now and say, like, they're being transparent, uh, transparent, excuse me, as far as the ingredient profile is concerned. 30 capsules per container. Um, looks good. I like the fact that they have phosphatidylserine. I really like phosphatidylserine. I take it, I think a good practical way in which you can use uh, phosphatidylserine is in the later portion of the day. Let's say when you're grinding it out a little bit and you don't want to eat, but you know you should eat because you got to refuel. Have some phosphatidylserine. It'll just help to remove that irritability. Better thing if you can combine it with a little bit of L-tyrosine. You don't, I'm learning these days. Yeah, part of using nootropics is, be, is being open-minded to the fact that you're never right. And there's always ways you can tweak things to be better. And I had for a while thought that tyrosine should only be taken in higher doses, like 500 milligrams to 750 milligrams. But I'm noticing like specifically for focus, not necessarily for helping you with your workouts, but small doses of L-tyrosine, like 200 milligrams, they really work well. You don't feel some of the irritability and the anxiety. They don't work as long as you would want, as you would want it to, for example. But with L-tyrosine, one of the issues for most people is that you're, I wouldn't say your judgment is impaired, but you're somewhat irritable. You're somewhat impatient and it's hard to really connect with people because you're too focused on what you should be asking them next. or You're too kind of in your head, if that makes sense. Like the drive is up. But is the emotional intelligence up? Not necessarily. Hope that, hope that was helpful. Is there anything that helps with auditory and or visual processing sensory issues? The racetams are where the research is at. Pramaracetam looks good. Paracetam looks good. Not a lot of research done on younger individuals. Would love to know like the age group that you're in yourself. I'm planning on doing an internship in finance. Only use modafinil, which I like for focus. But I want to keep motivation high. What is the best for this? Nupept, phenylparacetam. So some of my favorite nootropics around motivation are going to be the my four favorite racetams. I wouldn't say in this order, maybe this order, uh, paracetam, oxyracetam, anaracetam, and pramaracetam. Really good for motivation. Also, somewhat safe. I mean, I, I'm personally comfortable taking them every single day, whereas with other nootropics, I'm not comfortable taking them every single day, such as phenylprastam. Phenylprastam is just in a different category. That goes in the category of nootropics, which you wouldn't use every single day because it is such a, it is such a strong stimulant. So um, Nupept falls in that category along with the Rastam. They say Nupept is a lot more potent than uh, than paracetam, but paracetam, it's it'll make you more well-rounded to the fact like with Nupept, you're just very focused. It's kind of short-lasting. With paracetam, not only does it help with focus, it doesn't help with focus as much as Nupet, but your memory is a lot better. Uh, learning's better, recall is better, um, just verbal fluency is better. So I'm really enjoying that. I would consider taking Prastam twice a day, a dosage like one gram of Prastam along with 150 milligrams of choline. Take that twice a day. And then if you have uh, Nupet, 10 milligrams of Nupet is good to start with. Sorry, excuse me, 10 milligrams a day. 
as long as you respond well to it, you don't experience headaches, you're not in a bad mood, then you can up the dosage of them to twice a day. So a good practical stack for you around focus, around motivation is going to be Prastam, one gram, um, Alpha GPC, 150 milligrams, Nupep, 10 milligrams, and do that twice a day. It doesn't matter necessarily when you take them. It also doesn't matter whether or not you take them with a meal. You'll see really good results. I actually started my nootropic journey, um, not necessarily using too many stimulants, not necessarily using adaptogens like Bacopa, but mostly using the racetams. And then you see a lot of success with that, but then also you you um, you get to a point when you're wondering like, is this it? <laughs> and you're kind of in this rat race looking for the next paycheck. And then you can ground yourself a little bit more with some of the adaptogens, some of the more calming nootropics out there, like um, like ashwagandha, like lion's mane. Now with respect to phenylprostam, save that for a day when you really need it. Um, phenylprostam, modafinil, super strong stimulants. I'm talking about days when you're jet lagged, days when, you mean, um, there's, you know, just, you know, those days when you have a jam packed schedule, but you don't necessarily have the energy. I think it's really the energy that you want. It's not the sharpness for, for, for example, like on a day when I'm making a very important presentation, I would try to avoid fennel press time because I just want to make sure that I'm working right on all cylinders. But if I'm somewhat sleep deprived, then I may be taking it. If that makes sense. So you, you got to understand it when to use that fennel press time because the, like the downside, if you're taking so many stimulants, your body becomes reliant on stimulants. And there's a lot of people out there that have used something like Adderall. Very sad stories. They use Adderall for years and then they stop. They go cold turkey. Five years later, they still haven't recovered. And I, you never want to be that per person that's relying on stimulants, can't get off of caffeine. So be mindful of it. What I've been doing with my, um, with um, Wellbutrin, which is a, which is, often used to boost energy levels as I've not been taking it on the weekends. And that's just helping me a little bit. What's up from Italy? Cool. Is Prance Time similar to the Bradley Cooper, the movie Limitless? No, the Limitless pill would be Adderall pretty much. Not that I would recommend it, but the closest thing to Adderall, I think out there is something like Concerta, Vivan. So Concerta, you really feel that way. It's, it's crazy. Your, your mood, you're euphoric, you can learn fast, you can process things quicker, you can do mental math. I think the first way I knew that Concerta was working was just mental math. But instantly, whether it's a times table, division, you're, you're, you're working faster. People around you won't, won't even believe what's going on. But what happens is you have a very bad crash afterwards. And the reason I would never touch amphetamine or Concerta or anything like Adderall is because when you experience those withdrawals, they feel really bad. Uh, you go two weeks off of something like Concerta, you're you know, slower thinking, worse mood. I don't want to be around people and what goes up must go down. So the, if you watch the video that I've made where I kind of, I gave the limitless stack, that'll be a good video because it'll help you kind of understand how you can use nootropics in order to be somewhat safe while being somewhat limitless. And the answer is going to be using nootropics twice a day. It's, I mean, the new, the nootropic that you expect to take once a day to feel like that. Yeah, it doesn't exist or something that you shouldn't be taking. Is there any scientific evidence to support the notion that uh, combining mucunipurians and L-tyrosine, uh, one second, I'm just checking, is my audio okay? Yeah, my audio is good. So is there any scientific evidence to support the notion that combining mucunipurians and L-tyrosine provides benefits beyond what can be achieved by taking either supplement alone? No, I wish there was because both of them do boost dopamine. Mucunipurians, in my opinion, extremely overrated. What so is it's gonna, it should in theory help to, make you feel the way you the way you would feel with l tyrosine last the whole day <laughs> but in a practical sense i think very few people get the benefit from it and also you probably won't want to you probably wouldn't want to be taking something like mucunipurines every single day because uh, the way that it's like the the way in which it works in the dopaminergic system in my opinion it doesn't seem healthy you see it in the odd supplement here and there but even in the nootropic blends you see which have mucunipurines also known as L-DOPA, they have the warning there, like don't take this over 30 days straight. Even that's a lot. So that's been my experience. But if anyone else has had a good experience taking the mucunipurines, I would love to hear about it. With L-tyrosine, you can actually feel it. Uh, even N-acetyl L-tyrosine, which is like a more, it should be more potent, not really, but a common dosage of N-acetyl L-tyrosine is going to be 350 milligrams. That's how you're typically going to find it in capsule form. Highly overrated. Stick to the L-tyrosine. You take it, you um, feel the boost of focus, boost of drive, higher energy levels. You're able to fight off stress, like any kind of stress. Even with even if you're like severely dehydrated, you'll get this nice energy boost. So it's good in the, in the sense that it's not like a stimulant like caffeine, but it is somewhat energizing. I wouldn't take L-tyrosine just right before I'm going to bed. And guys, don't mind giving this live stream a thumbs up. Hopefully we can help some help people out and help people discover this wonderful, wonderful world of nootropics. Isn't it great? 
to be exposed to things like the limitless pill. Uh, is there any contraindication in using nootropics with coconut oil? No. So this goes back uh, go, goes back to the conversation about new, uh, about using nootropics and fat, fat soluble nootropics. Should you be taking nootropics along with a meal? I don't think you necessarily need to be taking nootropics along with a meal. I think that most nootropics anyway are okay to take in their fasted state, with the exception of something like a Tonkat Alley or um, green tea extracts. So no real need to. Um, but what is important is you have a good diet. Some like a nice couple tweaks I've been making sure that I've been more um, disciplined about are first thing in the morning, having some uh, some water along with some electrolytes. Get some iodized sea salt. Get some lemon juice. It'll help just to get things going a little bit. I personally don't like drinking water first thing in the morning. Is it, it feels uncomfortable? But force you know force it through. Um, and uh, while we're on this topic of morning, get some sunlight. It really helps to for your body to understand the clock when it should naturally fall asleep, and then and and you know um, end of day. Of course, if you can follow some good practices like get um, yeah make a make your room cold. Make sure there's no sunlight gleaming through those windows. What's your take on yerba mate being coming really popular? I think it really depends on what you're using your caffeine for and how you're responding to typically uh, to just um, typical caffeine. I like the fact that with caffeine, it's just very simple to take. Caffeine pills you can find in coffee. It's often in pre-workout. So the way that I'm typically ingesting my caffeine is going to be through a pre-workout. But if you don't respond that well to caffeine, definitely ingest with something like uh, yerba, yerba mate, the, uh, the tea. There's good science around it. can help to eliminate anxiety. I have personally found that I don't get that weird euphoria, or not, not weird, that euphoria you get with caffeine. It just feels good. You're courageous. You can do things. And I, I like that. <laughs> Probably not, not so healthy, but with yerba, yerba mate, it's... It's a little, it's a little softer than I would personally like. I'm sure it'll work for you. And same thing can be said with theocrine. Theocrine or theocrine, never going to be a replacement to caffeine. It's so overrated. If you know anyone that's taking the theocrine, just make sure they throw it in the garbage, please. Can magnesium uh, glyconate help with DPDR? There's always a chance. It doesn't hurt to try. It's probably not the magic formula. But when you have something like that, DPDR, you got to try everything. Most importantly, though, try a different diet. If you haven't tried the keto diet, it will really help you understand nutrition at a high level, and you'll understand what to do to make simple tweaks as far as your energy levels, as far as your mood. So you'll see some good good results that way. What um, else can be helpful, though, is fish oil, as simple as that is, like one gram of EPA. I've been looking at some research. It is really strong, like for mood. It's um, I wouldn't say it can replace an SSRI, but some studies are starting to show that the mood properties that one gram of EPA can potentially replace it or can make you um, need to take less of an SSRI to get the same benefit you typically would have. So fish oil, don't skip it. Uh, you may have to take more than one teaspoon. The teaspoon or, or the particular fish oil that I'm using right now, one teaspoon has about 750 milligrams of EPA. So I need to take about 1.5 uh, teaspoons. Hope that's helpful. But yeah, when it comes to mood, man, it's complex. Definitely give lion's mane a shot. I think lion's mane has been one of my favorite nootropics around mood, but the way in which the way in which it works with mood, it's interesting. Um, a lot of people like ashwagandha for anxiety. I don't like, I think ashwagandha is good for anxiety, but lion's mane is more so just good on every area of mood, not only anxiety, but also I just, I mean, how you wake up feeling It's pretty strong. And then there's other nootropics, which are going to kind of act like a short term effect just to boost your mood. Uh, things like 5-HTP, 5-HTP, 5-HTP is like a shot of, of um, serotonin. It's very strong. And on that point of mood, give somebody a hug. It's, it's probably the easiest way to get oxytocin released. So go hug someone. Hug them tight. Squeeze them. We're not in a pandemic. Out of the rest of times. Aren't we all? Uh, you were talking about which ones are good to take every day. Would you recommend normal pros time over oxy um, to stack with new pep. So I prefer normal prostam over the other racetams. If you don't have the other racetams, then I think my favorite would be anorastam. I think I've, I feel, I personally feel um, the learning properties and the memory benefits with anorastam more so than oxyrastam with. So what I'm glad you asked about this because I noticed a lot of people don't talk about the racetams, but like they're so important if you want to have, have a successful career, which I'm sure many of you do. Now, um, Oxyrastam, more, stimula more stimulating, more energizing. You can take it. You feel something. It's a little bit similar to Nupep that way. Just the, the downside with Oxyrastam 
you wouldn't be taking it as frequently as you would be taking Prastam. You would need to be cycling off of it. And that's a, not only across myself, just reading a lot of anecdotes. People don't tend to do well after taking Ox Prastam over two months straight, even less than that. So I would go something like four weeks on, followed by one week off. And Rastam, really good with verbal fluency. It got a lot of popularity based on its properties for decreasing levels of anxiety and um, social anxiety specifically help you with verbal fluency. So I like that it's good with learning. Pramorastam, that's a good execution nootropic. You feel very robot-like when you're taking Pramorastam. It's like um, the uh, you can you can go through boring, tedious tasks multiple times. We all admire that person that's able to consistently do the same job, like a chef that can cook the same meal 100 times during the day, for example. Like That's Pramorastam for you. You're so driven that you don't really care about the process. It's more about the actual results. So I, I stopped taking Pramorastam. I really miss it now, but that's specifically what it does. And you can look at uh, Prastam pretty much. It does like a combo of all these things to a lesser extent. But what I like with Prastam is that it's consistent. I feel pretty safe taking it. I've been taking Prastam for many years now. I've taken it maybe 300 days of every single year and have been using it probably since 2014. Feeling good, feeling better, no complaints with it. Some individuals experience side effects like headaches, even a worse mood with Prastam. But the key is if you're using the Rastam, make sure, make sure, make sure you're having it along with choline. If you don't respond that well to alpha GPC, that's okay. Take it with choline by tartrate. You're going to have a better experience. Hope that was helpful for all of you that want to know about the rest time. Just come back and find this question. Um, I just started putting coconut oil on foods like rice and salads. Wow, what a tasty, tasty difference. Oh, yeah, 100%. I don't, um, I don't know if it was in a fastest state, but I remember reading there was a gen there was a difference between... So when we look at coconut oil, we think about... Um, M MCTs. It's a saturated fat. It's a fat that can be used for fuel very efficiently for a lot of people. But I think it's females less often are going to notice results with this. Now, I could be wrong, and there's different studies showing this, but definitely interesting stuff. I'm somebody that doesn't respond that well to MCTs myself, but a lot of people do. They feel like it's brain fuel. But I'm a believer in like, man, a calorie is a calorie. I don't want to waste a tablespoon of oil. And what, what is that? A tablespoon of oil is like 13 grams of fat, 110 calories. I'd much rather... I mean, eat half a bag of chips. Not that I would choose chips. And what would you choose if you're running out of, of money? Ashwagandha or Bacopa? Never try both. I'm just on caffeine, tyrosine, and rhodiola rosea. Of the two, I prefer Bacopa more. Ashwagandha has never really been in my top 10. Uh, I look at Bacopa more like a nootropic, which is going to have cognitive benefits, going to help you with memory, going to help you to be more productive. For me anyway, just me, Ashwagandha helps to relieve stress, help you to have a better work-life balance, helps you be more present. Will it be helpful in making you more successful? Maybe not short term, perhaps long term, because you're experiencing better, I mean, just better overall quality of life experience. So that one's debatable. But I think for most people, ashwagandha becomes, uh, comes out to be a little bit less expensive. Mind you, they're both, I mean, both of them are pretty darn inexpensive. Bacopa is just overall going to be more effective for me. When I take Bacopa in the middle of the day, I can instantly feel it. I can't say the same thing with ashwagandha. I need to take ashwagandha every single day for a long period of time. But ashwagandha, Definitely has more research backing the effects of it. Uh, but when you look at the side effects, the side effects are very similar between them both, which are going to be, um, um, yeah, basically going to be a, a drop off in your drive. Ashwagandha may help with help, may help out with your sleep. With Bacopa, you may experience a little bit of drop of libido. With ashwagandha, that's not that likely to take place, though, which is cool. Best for memory, going to be Bacopa followed by Prastam. Some people like PRL853, but I really like Bacopa. I think for... Most people, anyway, I'd be surprised if you don't notice any benefit from it. If, you, if you're not getting a benefit from it, give, uh, just be patient with it. Wait wait seven days, wait 10 days. Uh, 500 milligrams, take that twice a day. It doesn't matter really if you take it, whether it's the Bacognize, whether it's a Synapse. You should feel, but yeah, you should really feel similar results from both. I've taken Bacopa from so many different vendors in the past, and it's probably the one nootropic out there. It really didn't matter much where I took it from. It was, it was always good to me. Hopefully, it's good to you. New cube supplement. All right, because we're in the new mood, I'm gonna look it up for you because I think other people have asked me about this too. New cube, new cube. Okay, cool. So what has it got in it? It's got. Oh, is this a Canadian product? Man, Canada is getting on the map, guys. I'm I'm from Canada, just so you know. And yes, I order when I get stuff from Nootropics Depot. I personally don't notice any issue. A lot of people ask me about that who are in Canada. Yeah, no, sorry, this thing is not coming up. But uh, ingredients. Okay, here it is. Bacopa, huperzine. What else? L-theanine, um, res resveratrol. Not sure why that's there. A bit more like an anti-aging supplement, L-tyrosine. Product looks good. 
kind of lower dose, but that's okay. Yeah, uh, no complaints with it. But like when you're evaluating, excuse me, when you're evaluating nootropic blends, the thing is, is a lot of it comes down to the price. I think that's why uh, Gorilla products do so well. I mean, the quality of the products, it's great. Is it the best? I don't know. But the one, one thing for, for darn certain, the cost per serving is incredibly low. I don't know how they do it. So when you're looking at something like quality, for example, there's a lot of ingredients, but it's damn, it's damn expensive. So I think that's the way a lot of people just rate nootropic blends. But I'm still using a lot of nootropic blends. I don't really notice any bad results from them, which is cool. Uh, do you have any? Do you have a recommendation for weight loss uh, slash appetite suppressant? I saw you had videos about it three to four years ago. Are there any updated suggestions? Oh, I just don't have videos on it anymore because nobody seems to care. Everybody wants to get rich, uh, get rich quick pill. That's what people are on this channel. I'm, I'm well aware. I would love to talk more about personal development and stuff like that. But weight loss, appetite suppressant, nothing's changed as far as ephedrine being the best thing when it comes to appetite suppression. Nothing will be. <laughs> you will not have any desire to have unhealthy foods. I could throw the cheesecake out. You can get in a, cal in a caloric deficit. Some other things which are going to be good. Not necessarily green tea extract, but green tea. Studies show that drinking it is a good way to um, drop your appetite. What else? Cayenne pepper, 5-HTP is going to help you. Some It's going to help some people, not everybody, with carbohydrate cravings because what 5-HTP does is it boosts serotonin. As, uh, as you boost serotonin, you don't have the desire to eat carbohydrates. Carbohydrates people eat because very often they're low on serotonin. That's why you hear about people using SSRIs often binge eating specifically with carbohydrates. So those would be the best few. And I had pretty good results with that actually. I I don't personally like ephedrine because of the fact that with ephedrine, it does some funny things with your with your hormones. I think it's it's pretty taxis, uh, taxis, taxing on your nervous system versus something like caffeine, despite it being a stimulant. And uh, you should see pretty good results with that. But I would actually avoid caffeine. So caffeine, it may be an appetite suppressant short term, but for most people, once they're experiencing that caffeine crash, your willpower is just gone and you seem to have this um, horrible urge to eat sugary or carbohydrate rich foods. And I hope that was helpful. Uh, but the other thing too, just uh, while we're on that topic, water rich foods really going to help you to reduce your appetite. If you have a big bowl of salad in, in, in the evening, for example, it's low on calorie, get some calorie free salad dressing, you'll be good. In your experience, what nootropics have the most noticeable and immediate effects? Um, Phenylprastam, caffeine is going to be good. New pep for me anyway, Rhodia Lorzea, Bacopa Mineri. And those are the, yeah, those are pretty much the ones that are top of mind. And then most of the other stuff you need to be taking for a consistent amount of time, which is the problem with most people is they want, is they're not able to delay the gratification or be consistent and stick to something. And if they do, then they're actually going to see results from them. And then they're going to be happy. Like you take the RAS tabs, for example, be objective with it, have a measurable way of noticing if things are different, easier to do. If you're in a commission based job, like myself, 30 days after you should most likely see what's working and what's not. A caffeine alternative for energy, except uh, tyrosine also what uh what for writing many pages of thesis without getting distracted or tired so pram rastam like i talked about is going to be one of those good ones for uh, pages of these of thesis other thing i mentioned l tyrosine phosphatidylserine there's actually um man there's a nootropic blend out there i think it's called superment it's really good i've been using that vitamin b uh watch your carbohydrate intake because with carbohydrates especially if you're eating like over 50 grams you're gonna have these horrible energy crashes during yeah like during the following few hours after that so ideally Get it down to you. Ideally, if you can just fast and do some of the hard work, like the writing in the beginning portion of the day, you'll be able to get it done because from the moment you have your first meal of the day, then everything seems to just be very unpredictable. It's hard to kind of sit still. And I would use something like uh, Rhodiola Rosea and get some other nootropics, maybe L-tyrosine, maybe small doses of caffeine to use in the middle of your writing session. So it's not only what you use before you write, it's the middle of your middle of your writing, just depending on how long the work stretch is. Most people really overestimate how long they can focus, which is a big issue. I think you can get like 90 minutes of focus and then, then you should be taking a break max. It's very difficult to get much work done after that and you get diminishing results. Um, I think I answered this question, right? Yeah, I think I answered that one. Uh, and the caffeine alternative for energy, I'm liking Dynamine more so for physical energy, not mental energy, but you'd be surprised. Like, I mean, caffeine offsets your judgment. I mean, I've been using caffeine for as a nootropic supplement for like 13, 14 years. I still don't entirely understand it, but I definitely know that when I'm not taking caffeine, my judgment is on par. I would use caffeine to get through material, but then I would read the material again off of caffeine so that I can get it um, ingrained in my memory. Not a nootropics. Do you have any tips for good being 
Yeah, if you follow my um, my actual Instagram page, Michael Dougal Toronto, uh, T O like Toronto, like the city. I put out sales tips all the time because I'm in sales. So, do you have any good tips for being social? It's all about asking questions, but also it's about versatility. So, what you're doing is you're knowing how to adapt to this specific personality style. We have analytical people, we have um, expressives, we have amiables, we have drivers. So, I think in sales. People have a tendency to sell people the way that they would be sold. If you're somebody that's sold by reading a bunch of newspapers and stuff, don't assume that other people are like that. Other people, you just may need to sell them emotionally. And so get better with your versatility, put yourself in different different um, situations, get uncomfortable every single day. And uh, yeah, your sales skills are really gonna are really gonna be out, are really gonna um, do well for yourself. Get good at closing. A lot of people are not comfortable closing. They can't confront, but you have to understand that confrontation is the highest form of love. If you really believe in your product, you should be confronting people. Why would you go to the competitor? Let's save time. This is the product that's right for you. This is the track record. Let's move forward. And, and um, the more you close, the more the more likely it is that you're going to get the deal. So I'm, I'm not saying be pushy. I'm saying be pleasantly persistent. Know know your product and know how to adapt it to the person. And don't talk too much. The 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 two best words in sales are shut up. So shut up. Boron, like and a please comment. Looks good. I, you know, I'm actually trying Born for the next 30 days. Let's see how I like it. But definitely going to be, um, I'm expecting it to do something good with my energy. So we'll see how that one goes. How would you describe the feeling of taking Concerta for the first time? Wow, man. Like I just got in a Ferrari and pressed go. It's crazy. I mean, you're euphoric. You have these grandiose expectations of yourself and you can, you'll see yourself taking over the world. So this was a small dose for me, 27 milligrams. I mean, that dose is the same thing that my GP's daughter was taking and she was small. I think a lot of people take a higher dose, but it depends on the individual. I'm somebody that's very sensitive to nootropics, very, very sensitive to stimulants. And yeah, you, um, you feel good. <laughs> you feel good. And you don't want to do anything except for work. But I, I gained a lot of bad weight when I was on Concerta. I just got Alpha GPC and Nupep that came today. What scooper should use? How much milligrams in one dose? So 10 milligrams of Nupep is good. Alpha GPC, something like 100 to 200 milligrams is going to be good for you. Thanks for that. I maybe got like six, uh, six or so hours. Maybe it's just the lighting though. Guys telling me I look sleep deprived. Thanks for the honesty. Uh, did you know anything about that? Oh, uh, no, I actually don't. Helps you. There's so many nootropic blends out there. Oh my gosh. How do we, how do we know what's good? Okay, I'm looking it out for you. And I guess it's because in different countries, different things are out there. Super strength technology. Okay, this looks like a fat loss product anyway. Yeah. Um, ingredients, caffeine, dynamine, theory cream. Isn't that cool? They combine all three of them, the ones that I was talking about. So these are the most popular stimulants out there. Uh, they've also got Yohimbi bark. So Yohimbi, I mean, you can get euphoric with it. I personally wouldn't take Yohimbi prior to a workout because it's going to do, it's going to make your your heart rate excessively high, and you're going to feel these weird heart palpitations. You're going to feel massive anxiety. The reason people use it, um, Yohimbine is they use it pre-cardio in a fasted state at a very low dose. You do steady state cardio, you're going to rip through that stubborn body fat. So if you're somebody that's plateaued around 10% body fat, try that protocol, fasted cardio, use Yohimbine. Watch the video on my channel where I've talked about it, and then, yeah, you're going to notice pretty good results because with Yohimbine, it's like, the blood flow goes to those, those stubborn areas. So for men, that's the love handles. For females, it generally seems to be like the um, the triceps and the thighs. And you'll be able to get past that point. So for females, I think like less than uh, less than 50% body fat is a good is gonna where you, is gonna be a point where you start to look really good and look like that bodybuilder. But also like your period starts to go away. So I don't recommend that. And for men, less than 10%. If you're like a true 10% body fat, you should have shoulder separation. You should have abs, and then beyond that. There's no real point because if you get to seven to eight percent body fat or even less, I don't know why you would. Your energy level is going to be bad, and you hopefully will get in a strange situation where you mess up your testosterone levels, your thyroid levels. That's what happened to me. The reason I went on to TRT was because I dieted down to like maybe six percent or so body fat, and it, yeah, I went on it for a bit, and then got my body fat back, and then I didn't didn't have to be on TRT anymore. Uh, will there be a crash after using caffeine and L-theanine? Good question. Yes, not to the same extent with caffeine. I do want people to be mindful about this, though. Caffeine and L-theanine, you may feel lightheaded. You may often be a lot more, a lot less productive. So you don't always need the L-theanine. Just try taking caffeine by itself. A lot of people are actually going to get better results with it or even taking it with uh, caffeine and L-tyrosine. Joe Rogan, man, you are wrong. Dead wrong, bro. You, that's what 
I've noticed the best salespeople have always thought that they could never be a salesperson. And that's just them being very closed minded. They are actually the best learners. Learn things, get out of your comfort zone. If you're if your ambition is high, you can get into sales. It's more, more so like a lack of ambition. Sales is, is everywhere. There's no high paying jobs without being a good salesperson anyway. So yeah, don't be a wimp, especially if your name's Joe Rogan. You got a bald head. What helps? Uh, yeah, I'm not sure about that. Um, and yeah, that's a good tip. No, I've not used it. I've not personally found any need to take phenyl, uh, phenylprostam hydrazide. I think most people would just use phenylprostam anyway. But of, but of what the reviews showed, I, I remember looking at it. People, I, I just remember people were saying that they didn't get the same benefit as phenylprostam did, and they would have to take a little bit more than than uh, they typically would with phenylprostam. But with phenylprostam, typically like 100 milligrams under the tongue seems to be good. I've never taken Accutane before, but here are good things about it. Um, not sure about that one. How efficient is the PQQ? Some people seem to like it, maybe like 20%. Uh, thoughts on NMN? So I think for younger individuals like myself, if you're in your 20s, 30s, you're probably not going to notice much from it. Is it going to be healthy to take? Probably. Just do you want to spend the money on nootropics um, like NMN? Maybe if you are if you have like an extremely bad mood and you've tried everything else and it's, they seem to not be working, then perhaps you can, but I don't think that you'd get any benefit from it. Or just you may... You wouldn't get anything uh, like, assuming you want to be more more productive and get that extra edge, I don't think it's what you'd be looking for. Lemon balm extract versus valerian root versus tribulus trestus for sleep. Cool. So lemon balm extract, very light. Um, you don't you don't feel funny with with uh, valerian root. You feel kind of funny. I feel lightheaded when I take it. I don't necessarily think it makes me have a worse sleep, but I personally don't like the way it like uh, tastes. For some reason, with the capsules, you can. I still can seem to taste it. It's one of those strange nootropics, but uh, tribulus trestus is going to be good in a different way. I feel like tribulus trestus is going to help you make your sleep a little bit deeper. Lemon balm is actually going to calm you down a bit for you to reduce those racing thoughts and for you to have a more um, restful sleep. From India, what is up? Okay, cool. I can consider doing that for you. Farah, it's going to be kelp and iodine. Are you confident rest time safety? For me, I am. And guys, I really hope you enjoyed the session. We'll be doing this more often. The way that you can help me up is by is getting one of the products from the affiliate links below. They help you out. They help me out. There's a discount code. And let me know how your progress goes with the nootro with the nootropics. I'm I'm sorry if I don't respond to your Instagram DMs, but I will respond if you write your comment on the on any of the pretty much any of the YouTube videos. Every Tuesday and Friday, I look at my comment section. I address every single comment across all the videos. So I really here for you. I want you to have a good life. I want you to work well with nootropics, also your diet, also exercise, keeping healthier and healthier and make sure it's a great day and good on you for being here and pursuing more education. I appreciate you guys. And we'll talk soon.